Minister Bruce Bilson speaking in Canberra. Uh, they were able to carry forward and the requirement for clear terms uh, was set to one side. That's been an area of some concern and Can confusion as well. All stakeholders get a chance to be part of this, obviously. And I, I know that wholesalers will be listening to this now saying, oh, yeah, picking on the wholesalers. No, yeah. they also get the opportunity to submit. Yeah. If they have concerns, uh, and I, I hear them, but when, I, when we go out to the markets, I hear them, they can submit them as well. It's part of the, the, the proper process of prudent government that we allow all those who are affected to submit their concerns. And I'm, I have no doubt that we are going to get um, a, a very strong response both from the farmers and from the wholesalers. Now, is there going to be another um, sort of philosophical uh, debate between the Libs and the Nats over a, a voluntary opt-in code and a mandatory we're, code? We're as one, aren't we? A mandatory code? He came and watched me speak in the chamber yeah. this morning. He said he was on fire. that me introducing the bill was like the Gettysburg Address. It was incredible. I mean, I'm so naive, I believed him. I mean, the <laughs> harmony and synchronicity that we share uh, is, is demonstrated Thanks. in the work that we do. Um, no, no, I mean, we, we get on very well. We both talk clearly and frankly, and we understand what each other's trying to achieve. And uh, I can't think of an example where we haven't landed on common ground. So no concern there. This is all about what's good for our economy, good for our producers, ensures good value for our consumers and, and clarity in the marketplace. And I think that's something we all enjoy. Have you both come to Jesus, got in touch with Jesus in the past day or so? Well, I thought Barnaby's speech was you impressive, know, but I wouldn't have characterised it that way. Can so. I just say that like, there's people having a little bit of fun with, this, with that comment, but I'm just going to say exactly, uh, there's a book by Colin Powell called It Worked For Me. I think it's one of the uh, better books of management that a person can read, especially in the political scheme. Colin Powell, former head of uh, the, the US de uh, Defence Operations in Iraq, uh, Secretary of State, and that's a term that he uses uh, quite frequently uh, now. So this idea that it was somehow conceptualised or invented the other day is, is not correct. Uh, it, it's really just a clear statement that um, a, you're about to say something serious and uh, take it seriously. Well, on that, do you think that leakers should be punished? Should they be booted out of cabinet? Look, leaking from cabinet is a, a shameful thing to do. It lets down the country, it lets down the colleagues. The best thing we can do with the great honour, an extraordinary rare privilege of being a Cabinet Minister, is to give our best every day, to contribute to the team, to respect the wisdom of the team and to go about the work of good governing. That's what counts, that's what we're paid to do, that's what I do, that's what Barnaby does, that's what all of our team is aspiring to do. We've just got to get on and govern well and that's our purpose and that's our engagement in Cabinet. Malcolm Chambers has, has just said in the press conference over like the Queen being for that, he says that the leaks are deplorable and he's I hadn't seen what Malcolm has said and if there's questions about what Malcolm said, take those up with Malcolm. Uh, I'm absolutely clear on the work of good governance. Today it's the launch of the Horticultural Code of Review. Earlier in the day I introduced the Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman legislation and right now the Parliament's debating uh, the Small Business Tax Cut. So that's our focus and, and that stays our focus and, and I'm not here to offer a running commentary on that sort of stuff. And, and Process. I mean, we're all no, not. Every we well, like good luck with that, but that's not what well, I'm I'll about. I'll tell you the one thing, that mm. there's only one person who really does know, and that's you. Yeah. <laughs> you about the rule of yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, that's, well, I suppose that's why we took jobs as parliamentarians, because we believe in the, uh, uh, what this, the nature of our nation is. Uh, the whole reason we go into that chamber is about, um, is about making sure that we protect our nation in all its forms. In that, uh, just, just on that line, line of thinking, thinking. currently being debated, in the House. Yes. Yet the government voted against bringing a vote on that bill and passing through the House straight away. Why? It was another bill short and stunt. You know, it's been over a year and a half since Labor's asked me a question about small business. Every day when I do get the opportunity to answer a question from our side and remind Labor of their appalling record on small business. 519,000 jobs lost under Labor. The number of small businesses employing people actually reduced under Labor. The share of the private sector workforce made possible by small business went from 52% to 43% under Labor. The only good thing Labor did for small business was to give work to printers. There were six small business ministers in six years, five in 15 months. That revolving door tells you all you need to know about how seriously Labor takes it. So today there was a stunt, a gag 
to deny debate and discussion about the needs and aspirations of small business and how the government's policy and program agenda is meeting those needs. That is not what small business deserves. I want small business to have a parliamentary day in the sun, to focus on the parliament, focusing on their needs, because you know why? The Senate doesn't reconvene any earlier. When the bill passes later today, that doesn't make the Senate sit any sooner. So it was a complete stunt to mask Labor's failure on small business. Bill Shorten should be condemned for what he's done. A shabby act to deny small business an opportunity to have their interests the focus of the parliament today. And that's why we voted against the gag. In, as, in estimates last night, Michael Williams has asked uh, the ACCC, Rod Sims, um, uh, he accused them of spooking investors in the free-range egg industry because of his lack of clarity over a, a code, and he's yep. called for the federal and state governments to hurry up and, and bring a national code. Uh, where, where is that at? Yeah, we've been working through what's called CAF, that's the Consumer Affairs Forum, that's where Consumer Affairs Ministers across the Commonwealth and the states come together to work this through. The last meeting, New South Wales took the lead. I've been liaising with the New South Wales Minister and we've both been liaising with our primary industry colleagues because there's two issues at play here. One's the animal welfare uh, uh, standards that are encapsulated in the code of practice and second is what's said to consumers about the eggs. Um, the court has found that for an egg to be labelled free range, the hen needs to be able to range freely, most days, and, and unimpeded. And, and what, what the industry is looking for is some clear guidance about what action steps egg producers need to take to be able to confidently use that term or some other term that reflects accurately and conveys to consumers what kind of egg that they are producing. And on that, I'm off. We've got to go. So here we go. This is it. The uh, code, we go. code of conduct. Uh, we're not going to eat an onion. No. Um, we're quite quite prepared to uh, <laughs> quite prepared to try some of the some of the. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Okay. This is some of the best produce of our country. This is the best produce in my office. It's not bad. Is this what you have each day? You know what I'm doing. I'm going to live with you. Because You're fetching. I think you deserve it. You're a good man. Thank okay. you. Thank you for your interest today. Agriculture Minister Barnaby Joyce and Small Business Minister Bruce Wilson there holding a news conference in Canberra to announce a review into the Horticulture Code of Conduct and enjoying a basket of...